So, hi everyone, and welcome to this series of practice problems uh, related to the circuit analysis. And today we'll start with you uh, questions about the nodal analysis. But before we start, let's just look to the big picture of the nodal analysis versus the KCL and KVL. What is the main objective of the KCL, KVL versus the nodal? As we mentioned before, in KCL, KVL, our main objective is to find the currents, I1, I2, I3. In every branch in the circuit, we want to find the current. But for nodal, is different. We want to know all node voltages. These are all nodes in the circuit. So my main objective, I'd like to find those node voltages, okay? So that is the main difference between KCL, KVL, and nodal analysis. Now, let's go and see what is the procedure that we have to follow to apply the nodal analysis, and then we will solve the same questions we solved in the previous examples about KCL and KVL, and then we'll see physically uh, what is the difference in terms of the efficiency? Which one is easier to apply and which one is more efficient when it comes to dealing with the mathematical equations? So, we want to find V in this question between this node and this node. And we want to uh, apply nodal analysis. Okay, so since even from its name, nodal analysis, we deal with nodes. So we need to identify the nodes. We have here node one, node two, and node three. Okay, now what are the steps? First, we need to select a node as a reference. And all the voltages that we will calculate will be with respect to this reference node. Now, when we have only current sources, as in this example, it doesn't really matter where you select your, your reference, okay? But when we have voltage sources, then it could make a difference selecting the reference from one point to another. So let me select it here. So what is this reference? This reference means that my voltage is set to zero. So everything else I will calculate is with respect to this zero reference voltage. Number two, now we will assign voltages to the other nodes. So I will have here V1, V2. Here I don't. Why? Because I already know the voltage. Number three, we will apply KCL to each of those nodes one and two not the reference we don't touch the reference okay how we apply kcl kcl as we know it summation of currents at any node is equal to zero however the way we apply kcl or represent the current is a bit different than what we used before so if this is two nodes and this is the resistance so i will not assign a variable i call it i no the current here will be in terms of these two node voltages and the resistance, V1 minus V2 divided by R. Now it's V1 minus V2 because the direction of the current is in this. If I reverse it, it will become V2 minus, minus V1. Now here I'd like to stress on a fact, very important fact, that in nodal, we only apply KCL. We do not apply KVL. And this will make nodal more systematic than the KCL, KVL techniques. Once we set our equations, once we know them, then we need to solve them. Now it becomes a math problem, okay? We need to uh, find those uh, voltages, not voltages. Once we are done with this, then we'll see what do we want from the question? What I would like to calculate? A current, a voltage, a power loss, or anything else? So let's now apply these simple rules to this question. But always remember, what is our objective? Is to find the node voltages. Always keep this in mind. Okay. 
So I will call this V1, V2, my reference, and V is equal to, to zero. Okay, so I will apply KCL at V1. Now, how to assign the current directions? When we have a current source, we use it as it is. Enter or leave the node, we don't touch. The rest, it's up to you. As far as you apply the simple KCL rule, current enter the node, equal current leaves the node, it doesn't really matter. Personally, I assume always the current leaves the node. So this is leaving and this is leaving. Remember, do not assign any current variable. We don't need to do that. Okay. So we have one, two, three branches. So we have to have three, three terms in the equation. This is enter the node. So this is one equal to these two current leaves the node. So the current that goes to the bottom, V1 minus the voltage on the other side of the resistance, which is zero divided by plus the other current, which is V1 minus V2 divided by the resistance in between, which is six, and that's it. Now, we, we don't like to see numbers in the denominator, so we will multiply by the uh, least common factor between them. So I will multiply this equation times six and the arranged terms. So we will have here V1 minus V2 plus 3v1 equal to 2 to 6. This is 3v1 from here. Okay. And v1 minus v2 is from here. So multiplying everything by times 6. Okay. So we will have here 4v1 minus v2 is equal to 6. And this is my first equation. Now we'll go for the next node, which is v2. So KCL at V2. Remember, how many unknowns we have? Only V1 and V2. So how many equations do I need? Only two to solve for V1 and, and V2. Okay. Now, how do I assume the current directions here? Knowing that I assume the current in this branch in that direction, I can assume a different current direction. I can, ast again, assume everything is leaving and ignore this, it doesn't really matter. Again, you can assume any current direction as far as you apply the simple rules. Current enter the node equal to current leave the node. So the current to the left becomes equal to V2 minus V1 divided by six plus to the bottom V2 minus zero divided by seven, leaving plus four equal to zero. So I will multiply everything times 42, the least common factor. So we'll have here 7 times V2 minus V1 plus 6 times V2 equal to minus 168, which is 42 times times this 4. Add terms, we'll have minus 7 V1 plus 13 V2 equal to minus 168 and this is my second equation. So we have now two equations. Now my electrical engineering part or circuit analysis part is done. All I need to do now is math. I have two equations with two unknowns. I want to solve them, okay? So this is the equation. So I can eliminate V2. If I multiply equation 1 by 13, add it to equation 2, it will be eliminated, V2. Then we can find V1, and then from that we can find v, V2. So multiply equation 1 with 13, and I write it down here. So this is becomes 52 V1, 13 times this, minus 13 V2, equal to 70. It, I will call this is equation number three. Now I will add these two equations to get rid of V2. So when you add, it becomes 45 V1 is equal to minus 90 or V1 would equal to minus 2 
2 volt. I know V1, I can find V2. So from equation 1, you can say that if you move V to this side and this to this side, so you will have V2 is equal to 4 V1 minus 6. Or 4 times minus 2 minus 6 equal to minus 14 volt. So your V2 is minus 14 volt. Your V1 is minus 2 volt. And this is your reference equal to 0. Now, let's see what I want to calculate. Okay, I want to find V. The voltage difference between V1 and V2. Why I said V1 minus V2? Because the plus is towards the V1, the minus towards the V2. So your V is nothing but V1 minus V2. V1 what? It is minus 2. Minus V2 is minus 14. So this is give me 12 volt. And that's exactly the answer we got from the KCL KVL. Remember, in the KCL KVL question, we needed three equations because we had three unknowns. Here we have only two equations because we only have two unknowns. And this is the main advantages of nodal analysis. In most of the time, you need less number of equations. So this would make the problem more, more efficient. We will have more questions. We will solve all the other three questions that I solved in the KCL, KVL uh, techniques. And we will compare every time I would make this reference between the uh, technique, which is nodal here, with the, KC, with the KCL KVL uh, techniques.